send anything you give to the school. Did y'all hear that? Guess what else you can resend, black parents? And by the way, what I'm giving you is federal law. So whether you live in Nevada, California, Seattle, New York, Houston, everything I tell you today, you use wherever you go. I'll be going to St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands soon, because they need the information, because although they're not a state, they're U.S. territory. Special ed over there, too. The other thing you can give back is permission for them to evaluate your child. In other words, some of y'all sitting here right now, you gave them permission to evaluate your child. But you're hearing some stuff from Dr. Umar today, and you're going to read some stuff in Dr. Umar's book you want to buy today that's going to convince you that my baby don't need to be tested right now. But Dr. Umar already told him to do it. You can resend it, write a letter. And I have a sample letter in my book that you can copy and send in. And it says, I'm hereby notifying the school, or I'm hereby demanding that all testing and evaluation procedures being conducted on my child be terminated immediately. I am no longer interested in the psychological evaluation at this time. Should I change my mind in the future, I will request another evaluation. You can stop it. And guess what? As the school psychologist, if I get that form, I can't get your kid no more. It's done with. I don't care if I'm in the middle of the IQ test. If I get that letter saying the parent said no more testing, I'm rescinding my request, the testing stops immediately. Or I can lose my job or credential. You can always take it back, parents. Number one, you don't sign. Number two, don't sign a release of information. Number three, don't go to any meetings by yourself. Mothers bring the father, father bring the mother. If mother and father ain't getting along, mother find a brother, uncle and cousin. Father bring a niece, auntie. It's always good to have both genders represented. Because if you show up with a whole bunch of brothers with no woman, they're going to say you try to turn the place out. Right? And sisters, you got to bring a man with you in case they try to get disrespected. So it's good to balance out. And sisters in Las Vegas, if you can't find you a good alpha male to come to the meeting, because you know alpha males is like, we more, what they call it, endangered species than the silverbacks. Right? America is going around killing alpha males. And they're replacing us with sugarback males. <laughs> no, I will never disrespect the homosexual brothers, bisexual, queer, transgender, but I reserve the right to disagree with the life style. And the reason I reserve the right to disagree with the lifestyle is because there's no way you can be for the black family and support behavior that kills off the black family. Do you understand? I do not hate you. My lesbian sisters, I do not hate you. Most of you not lesbian anyway, you just ain't had the right masculine vibration around your ass yet. Oh yeah. You get the right alpha around there, she'll start dancing for that ass. <laughs> Don't get it twisted, see, we can change it all. But in America, it's illegal to do therapy on people who no longer want to be sexually confused. Oh yes, it is illegal. If they catch a psychologist engaging in conversion therapy, even if you say, I don't want to be this, I want help. Psychologist says, I can help you not be that no more. You will lose your job, you will lose your license, you will lose your credentials. It is illegal in America to help sexually confused people become normal again. And let me be clear, they don't care about gay black people anymore, they're straight black people. This is about killing off the black population. That's why you see all these gay commercials and biracial commercials, because they want our kids to abandon traditional black family structure. That's what this is. Do you know the Center for Disease Control reported a year or two ago that teenage pregnancy in the black community is down for the first time since like 1968? They said black, the teenage pregnancy, you know why it's down? Because lesbianism is up. Yes. 
But the problem that white folks is having, brothers and sisters, and I don't wish no harm on them, but the problem white folks is having is by killing us, by pushing that on our children, they're killing their own group. Do you know 25 United States have a zero birth growth rate for white folks? Do your research when you go home if you don't think I'm telling the truth. Associated Press reported it. 25 states have more white people dying than being born. You know why? Because they're trying to push this on our kids, but their kids are grabbing it, and it's reducing their numbers. Why do you think the white man is so concerned about his dwindling population? Every time you turn on CNN, what are they talking about? Americans are shrinking. But why are you shrinking? Is it a coincidence you're shrinking in the very same generation and decade that you've been pushing same-sex relationships? It's the consequence. And I would also argue that part of the reason police genocide is up and violence is up against black folk is because the white man is reacting to the threat of his own extermination. I'm not wishing it on him. I'm just giving you the psychological analysis. I help white folks. I help Chinese. They call me up. Arabs, East Indians. I had one white mom try to crush on me. I'm not interested in that. I don't want to eat mayonnaise and cheese for the rest of my damn life. I like a little paprika and jerk on my wings. The snow bunny thing is out of control. It's so bad that when a black man get around a group of white women, they assume we want them. I mean, they could be the nastiest looking lizards you've ever seen. But they will assume my water. No ass, no shape. Three chin, six necks, no ankles. I don't want you. But because black men been going so crazy over this thing. And then you don't even get the cute ones, you get the nasty ones. And then when the white, when the black man with the white woman, he don't even want to speak to the black woman. Have you seen this? He got to go out of his way to prove to Miss Fat Back that he don't want no more melody. And see, black man, I understand the white woman got a natural attraction to you. Because the first law of human nature is self-preservation. So the reason why the white woman loves the tall, dark, and handsome is because her DNA calls out for a life shot. She wants to procreate herself because she understands genetically the fact that she lacks the melanin can cause a reduction in white reproduction. So her unconscious calls out to the black man melanin to please help me survive. The white woman's attraction for the black man is an unconscious genetic love and quest for survival. So I know why the white woman is attracted to me. Because the white male does not guarantee her survival because he's just as recessive as she is. So she'd rather have the mixed race African child than no child at all. And let us be clear, white women aren't only having one or two babies because they just sophisticated and no, they're not able to conceive at the rate black women can. Read the old medical studies, not the new ones. Go back to the 60s and 50s and 70s where they said it in their own paperwork. She's not as fertile. That's why she takes fertility drugs. You see them on CNN once a year, 15 bald-headed white babies all born at once. <laughs> Peggy Sue of Southern Vermont gave birth to 24 big-headed white babies. <laughs> We don't have to do that. Black 
women are the mothers, black men are the fathers. And then the young people at the colleges, they love to, Dr. Uma, why nobody likes black folks? I'll tell you why, rule number one, you're melanin. You're the only people in the world who can reproduce yourself and any other people in the world. I can make a black baby with the Chinese. I can make a black baby with the white woman. I can make a black baby with the Arab, the East Indian. I would never do such a thing, but I could. The white man can't go to no other woman and reproduce himself. The white man can only reproduce himself and the white woman, that's it. There's a genetic reproductive inferiority complex. See, black men, we have physically and sexually objectified the white man's reproductive insecurity complex. We think it's about size, right? Black men, yeah, white man jealous of us because we bigger. It ain't got nothing to do with your size because not all brothers have size. Slaves will tell you that. Right, ladies? Yes. She said, you have Deanna sausage. Yes. It's not size, it's genetic potency. That's why when they hung black folks, over 5,000 black folks was lynched between 1865 and 1920. You, and most of the time when they lynched us, they castrated us. They hung Chinese, didn't castrate. Hung Jews, didn't castrate. Hung Italians, didn't castrate. 99% of the time when they hung black males, castration. Why did they cut off your reproductives but never did it to other people? Because that's the jealousy, not the size. Your ability to reproduce yourself in any woman in the world. How do you get rid of the people who can reproduce themselves? So some of y'all say, well, Dr. Umar, we can reproduce ourselves, brother, but shouldn't we just go ahead and spread the love? No, you shouldn't, because when you reproduce yourself, not all, but some of our mixed race African brothers and sisters will develop a psychological complex and a loyalty to the oppressor's blood. You cause a confusion, not in all, but in some. This is why some mixed race Africans, not all, because I know some who go harder than y'all, but some of them have an issue because if my mother's white, how can I say race first? If my father's white, how can I say all white people are racist? It's a confusion thing because you're asking them to speak out against a part of who they are. And the only way we deal with that complex is to not reproduce outside the race. If we are of royal blood, if we all agree that as Africans we are of royal blood, if you study royal reproductive behavior, royals do not mix except with other royal families. Are y'all following me? Yes. So if you are a king, stop calling yourself a king, black man, and you run around with somebody else's woman. A king wouldn't do that. A king would only be caught with a queen. The black woman is God, and you laid up with some nasty Caucasian mayonnaise man. You ain't God. Because a god this would not have a devil sleeping in her bed. <laughs> rule number four. Never go to the meetings by yourself is rule number three. Black men, I need black men to honor that. Why do I need black men to honor that? Because when black men go to the school by yourself and you start checking them white teachers, they're going to exaggerate and say you threaten them and you're gonna get a restraining order and you'll never be allowed to go into that school again. So brothers, always take a sister with you to mellow off the energy. And black woman, if you can't find no alpha male, go to the corner and get a couple corner boys to go in that meeting with you. Uh-huh. Get some gangbangers in that damn IEP. Oh yeah! Get Ray Ray and Mike Mike in there. With all their colors on, red, blue, all that shit, and tell them to come up in there. You say, Mike, Mike, I don't want y'all to say nothing, because you will mess it up. <laughs> Just stand there, look as gangster as you can look, smelling like weed, Red Bull, 40 ounce, I don't give a shot. <laughs> and the minute the white folks start talking about my son needs some Adderall or some Ritalin or some Concerta or some Metadate or some Cycler or some Risperdal or some Prozac or some Paxil, soon when they start pushing the mess, I want you to bang your fist on the table one time, 
and all y'all gonna open your eyes real wide and give them the dice no more. It won't be no more ADHD. White folks are scared of black men who ain't got nothing to lose. I'm serious, it works. Tell them coming in with a white beater on, tattoos out, the whole nine, pants, sagging, tempo. Yeah! And then the white folks are like, oh my God, we didn't know you were bringing people with you. <laughs> oh yeah. If they got four or five people in the meeting, you should have four or five people in the meeting. Don't let them gang up on you. Because they love to gang up on black women. They'll have one black woman and 20 white folks. The principal, principal intern, school nurse, school counselor, psychologist, reading specialist, grade leader, home and school, dean of students. Why do they gang up on you, black mother? To intimidate you. The idea is if we circle her with all our degrees and make her think she's intellectually inferior, the black mother will sign off just to get out of this uncomfortable meeting. This is what they do. I call it a schoolhouse lynching. Don't go by yourself. Rule number four. Don't get children evaluated under the age of eight unless they have a real organic Disability. Now, special education is 13 disabilities, brothers and sisters. They are autism, emotional disturbance, intellectual disability, the learning disability, which has eight types itself, reading comprehension, reading fluency, basic reading skills, math calculations, math reasoning, oral expression, listening comprehension, written expression. There's eight types of the one specific learning disability, SLD. And then you have deaf children, blind children, orthopedically impaired children, multiple disability children, developmentally delayed children. You have 13, but there's four that I call the Jim Crow disabilities because those are the ones they use on black kids. What are the four? Learning disability, emotional disturbance, intellectual disability, and other health impairment for ain't no daddy at home disorder, ADHD. And why do I call it ain't no daddy at home? Because more than 80% of black boys diagnosed with ADHD don't have a father. And when did we get ADHD? When did we get it? 1980, same year CIA dropped off crack. They started drugging the kids with the Ritalin the same year they was drugging the family in the street. Chemical warfare against the whole community. They was locking up black men, leaving the mothers at home. The discipline wasn't there. The emotional nurturance wasn't there because the mother couldn't do it all by herself, understandably. So they made a disability up out of thin air to make $30 billion a year off black folks. They are making a killing on Wall Street because you keep on letting white folks convince you to take your child to the psychiatrist for crack. And let us be clear, Ritalin is crack. Metadate is crack. Cycler is crack. Adderall is crack. These drugs are one molecule, most of them away from crack cocaine. So you mean to tell me your son's father in jail for selling crack? but it's okay to give it to his son? Look at the hypocrisy! I got a letter in the mail from the Attorney General of Pennsylvania. As soon as that book came out, excuse me, two weeks before the book came out, I got a letter from the Attorney General telling me we're going to take your credentials away from you if you don't stop Pennsylvania, if you don't stop engaging in bigoted speech. This is what they told me. So I'm going to write them back. And I'm going to say, do whatever you want. Because the best slave is a free slave crack. So if you want to free me, take the chains off, devil. I'm going to keep teaching and doing what I'm doing. See, the reason I'm the only school psychologist you know who teaches this is because most black psychologists are getting paid from the system. They will never. I should have not been the first psychologist to tell them that special ed was a money hustle. I'm the 
first one to tell you that all these black psychologists, nobody never told the black community that special ed is a business. What do you mean, Dr. Johnson? It's the business. I mean that if I evaluate one of these babies, and I say they have an intellectual disability or autism, or if I say they have an ADHD problem or learning problem, or they needed some speech therapy, their name goes into a computer, and it goes to the State Department of Education for Nevada, and by the end of the month, after I give them an IEP, a welfare check will be sent to the school for that child. Oh yes, oh yes. You don't believe me? Do yourself a little homework. Call your State Department of Education, Bureau of Special Ed, and ask them, what is the special ed subsidy for children in Las Vegas? And see if it don't blow your mind. In Philadelphia, the special ed kids get an extra $20,000. Oh yeah, this is money! Ain't nobody think about your child! And what bothers me, most black kids are special ed for the what? Learning disability. Most kids in Nevada, black and special ed, are there for the learning disability. Reading. Reading and math, because you know black kids are allergic to books and shit. Have you noticed? They get measles, you take a book out, they get the flu. Have you seen that? They don't open up a math workbook, they get COVID, bronchitis. Measles. And why are black kids allergic to reading and math? Because parents have allowed your child to get addicted to video games and social network. So in your house, there's no books. I'm willing to bet if I go into half the homes of you in here and half the homes of black folks in Las Vegas in the community, I'm willing to bet in at least half those houses, I will not find a dictionary. I will not find a thesaurus. I will not find a complete set of encyclopedia A to Z. I bet you. I bet you I know. Because I do mobile therapy. And the first thing I do when I go into a child's home is look for reading material. And there is none. Whole bunch of Jordans. Whole bunch of video games. iPads, laptops, big screen TVs. There's nothing worse than when I go into a home for therapy and there's no reading material, but they got a big screen TV. And the screen's so damn big that it's bigger than the wall that it's on. So they had to counterclock the shit. Y'all know them purity ghetto. Why the hell did you get a smaller screen? The screen bigger than the damn wall, so you gotta look at TV this way. Cause they need a four more inches. Had to take the white Jesus off and move him over here. And then people get mad at me for saying I want a residential school where the parents can't come but once in a while. You're damn right I want a residential school where parents can't come once in a while because with all due respect, the parents are the problem. And that's not just true for black folks, it's true for everybody, but we're talking about ourselves. In fact, there's some child psychologists who would argue there's no need to do therapy with kids. It's a waste of time because if you don't change the way the parents interact with the kids, you'll never alleviate the child's problem. Which is why if I was in charge, we wouldn't diagnose kids, we'd diagnose the homes they come from. Why are y'all so quick to get them tested? Y'all so quick? Why is a first grader being tested for reading problems? Why is a kindergartner being tested for ADHD? Can you prove ADHD? No! Can you prove a reading disability? No! Is there a blood test for a reading disability? Is there an extra, where is the reading disability located? Can somebody tell me, is it in the back? Maybe it's up here, where the reading disability? Is it over here? Is it the third eye? Where is the reading disability in the brain? Can you see it anywhere? Huh. What about emotional disturbance? Where is the ED at? Is it in the front, is it in the side? Huh? Is it in the hippocampus? Where is it at? Is it in the prefrontal? Can somebody show me where the ED? You can't. You know why? Because it's not a fact. It's an idea. It's an opinion. It's a hypothesis. If your child got an IEP right now for reading a map, show me. Prove to me that he really got it. He ain't got it. You know what he got? 
Not a learning disability, but a lazy disability. Ninety uh, percent uh. of all children of every race that I've ever tested didn't have a learning disability. They had a lazy disability. It's not that he couldn't learn how to read. He didn't want to. It's not that your daughter don't know how to do fractions. She don't want to, because she going to be the next Nikki and Cardi. <laughs> this son ain't got to learn how to read for what? I'm going to be the next Michael Vick. That's the problem. We got our boys and girls thinking they're going to live a comfortable life being an entertainer. Well, I got news for you. And for my young people who are here, I got news for you. A black man has a greater chance of being struck by lightning than becoming a professional athlete. Did you know that? Statistically, you're more likely to get struck by lightning than to become a professional athlete. And if it was up to me, I would ban the NFL and the NBA any damn way. I would ban it. In fact, I'm wrestling with myself as to whether or not we're even going to have football and basketball at FDMG. I'm serious. I don't know if I want to do it because we keep on socializing black boys towards physical power and strength the same way slavery did. <laughs> LeBron James' worth, who I respect, LeBron James' worth is calculated the same way your great, great, great grandfather's worth was calculated on the plantation. The only difference between LeBron James and your great, 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 great grandfather in Mississippi, Alabama, is LeBron gets a subsidy. Your grandfather did. We are still valuing black men for their physical strength and ability. That's what slavery did. How are we any better? I don't want him going to the NFL or NBA because I know he's going to get a white agent who's going to engineer a white woman in his life. Half these black athletes don't even know the white girl you got, you didn't even choose them. They were sent to you by the agent so they can know everything going on in your life. And you happen to marry her. See, this is what's wrong with new black money. See, black money and white money don't operate on the same terms. Rich white men don't marry broke white girls. Yeah. Let me say it again. Rich white men do not marry broke white girls. The only millionaires in America marrying broke white girls are black athletes and entertainers. In other words, the only white woman you are allowed to have are the white women that other black men don't want. Excuse me, the white women that other white men don't want. You get the leftovers. You don't marry into royalty. You marry the broke. There's nothing against the white woman. If she can find her a dumb coon worth 20 million that she can spend a few years with and then divorce him and take half of everything he got, why not? I love Kanye West. He's coonish, but he needs some therapy. But I know Kim didn't have three, four, five babies just to have them. She knew what she was doing. Even if we got a prenup, the fact I got a half dozen of your black babies, are y'all following me? It's going to dictate I get a chunk of that, and then what did the white man do to help Kim Kardashian out? As soon as they file for divorce, the they start putting Kanye West's net worth all over the news. Did y'all see that? They want to make sure Kim know how much he got. Kanye West is one of the three richest black men in America. Why did that come out right after she filed for divorce? So she can get it all. Kim, he hiding some stuff. Make sure you get that easy money. And I don't think Kanye a bad dude. I just think after he lost his significant other, he never got the help that he needed because he's in the upper echelon. I don't know if Kanye got anybody around him who genuinely cares about Kanye. Are y'all following me? Because I don't think he's a bad person. I can tell he loves people. He's a good brother. But he ain't got no consciousness. 
I wish I could spend a day with Kanye. Sit your ass down. No more white girls. That's the first rule. Go back to Chicago and find one of them sisters who held you down when you was broke and make them the new wife. No more devils in your bedroom. I do not think Kanye is back. So let's this. Next rule, number five. Let's stay with this eval for a minute. Don't get the kids evaluated under the age of seven because you can't prove it. Furthermore, if you put your baby in special ed at such a young age, if you find out later they didn't have the problem, you still have a problem because now the child has identified with the disability. Are y'all following me? So my next rule, rule number six, never tell the children that they have a disability. I'm going to say it again. Why would you tell a five-year-old you have ADHD? Why would you tell a six-year-old you have autism? Why would you tell a seven-year-old you have a reading disability? Just because you was dumb enough to believe a white person's opinion about your child's intellectual feeling doesn't mean your child has to believe it. You never share labels with kids. That's crazy. You want to tell a black boy, you know you don't have no control over your behavior. It's not your fault. Why the hell would you do that? Because guess what? When the police say freeze, when the police say stop, and he's still moving because my mom said I got conduct disorder. I don't have to control myself. Do the police have to respect them labels? Do you see how many mentally ill black folks have been getting killed by police? Police don't care about them damn labels. Stop giving our children these imaginary crutches that they use thinking they're going to get over on white folks. You can't. And I'm going to tell you adults something. You better stop applying for these SSI crazy checks y'all be trying to get. Y'all better stop. And the reason I'm telling you that under these new gun laws that a Biden is proposing, if you have been determined to be psychologically unhealthy, or if you take psychiatric medication, or in many states, if you have a marijuana card, you cannot carry a firearm. Did y'all hear that? Oh, yes. I was at the gun store. I had to get the gun for y'all. People calls me all times of the night. White folks, black folks. I'm at the gun store, and the customer had a, he said, do you have a marijuana card? He said, yes. He said, oh, you can't get no license to carry. I said, what you mean? In Pennsylvania, in most states, if you have a medical marijuana card, you cannot carry a licensed firearm, a concealed weapon. You can't. Some of y'all getting the SSI check for schizophrenia where you fake the schizophrenia. <laughs> right? You mentally unstable for $600 a month and shit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You will not be able to carry a gun. Please understand the ramifications. Yeah of these financial hustles that you run. And some of y'all putting your children in harm's way because when they get 21, they won't be able to carry because you let the white man diagnose them up, drug them up, and do everything else. He won't be able to carry a gun. This is what they do. They are disarming black folks with our own help. And don't give your guns away. Get more of them. I don't like the way America's going, and you got to be prepared. Start stocking up. I'm serious. Get you a knife, get you a bow and arrow, get you a damn slingshot. Get it all. I'm about to go get that damn archery thing, too. I'm serious. These white folks is out here, and they're crazy, and we don't know when America's going to let them loose on the black community. I totally believe when they let the white folks overrun the Capitol building, I believe that was a test run for martial law. And I believe that was a potential alibi. So when the white folks overrun the black community, they can say, well, they overran the Capitol too, and we couldn't do nothing about it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Be careful, y'all. Be armed and be organized. Brothers and sisters, racism is our main problem. But black complicity is our second problem. And I need y'all to understand the rules of racism, and that is all white people are racist. All white people are racist.
Every white person you know is a racist. There's no white person who was not a racist. Now don't confuse me with saying every white person is a bigot or every white person hates black folks. Most of them do, but not every last one. Racism is not about hate. Racism is about power. You do not have to hate black people to be a racist. You just have to want to control black people's opportunities. Racism is not about how you feel. Racism is about what you want to control. And this is why some of you have a hard time understanding that your white coworkers and your white neighbors and your white sister-in-law and your white mother-in-law, they're racist too. All white people protected. You can't have white people who don't protect racism because if you get too many of them, the system will fall apart. It requires constant upkeep. Every white person, I had a white person that called in the radio, Dr. Umar, my ancestors didn't own black folks. I'm off the hook. No, you ain't devil. And why aren't they off the hook? They're not off the hook because even if your ancestors didn't own mine, they still benefited from the enslavement of mine. Your ancestors had privileges just because mine did not. Your ancestors had access to resources just because mine did not. Your ancestors were able to get land because mine were not. What did your ancestors do for a living? Did they work on the railroad? Well, how did they get to work on the railroad? Because slavery had empowered the American economy so much that it made railroads necessary. What's your ancestor do? He was a seaman on a ship? Well, how did he end up being a seaman on the ship? Because slavery had so empowered the American economy that it created jobs for white folks on the open sea. Your father was a police officer. Why did he become a police officer? Because slavery demonized and criminalized all white, excuse me, all black folks, which gave jobs to white folks to patrol us. Show me how you don't benefit from slavery. Today, you get loans because I can't. You get jobs because I can't. Your privilege is a direct reflection of my discrimination. Stop letting white people turn racism into an emotional game. How I feel. I don't hate black people. That has nothing to do with it. But I'm willing to bet that if one of them, if you saw one outside your house, you'll call the damn police, wouldn't you? Rule number two, white people don't share power with black folks. White folks don't share power with black folks. No, no, no. They want to monopolize power. That's why in Las Vegas you see them signs talking about a new community, a new beginning, a multicultural city that's alive. They're moving black folks out of Las Vegas. They want you gone. And the best way to get rid of black folks is to make you think you're actually including them. And you know what they do on the East Coast and in the Midwest to get rid of black folks? They open up charter schools. Do y'all have charter schools yet? Las Vegas got charters? The charter school is the best weapon of ethnic cleansing. You know why? If I want to get rid of black folks out of Las Vegas, all I'll do is open up a charter school in the middle of the hood. Black folks are going to be so happy there's a new school for their kids. They're not going to find out who is opening up this charter. And then when they see 90% white folks hired at the charter school, they're still not going to say nothing. And then those 90% white folks who work at the charter school in the black community are going to buy up all the abandoned houses and lots and storefronts. And you're still not going to say nothing because you're going to say it looks like a good thing for my baby's teacher to live down the street. And then the city going to raise the property tax value on your house. And so now black homeowners are going to start selling off their property. And before you know it, that area of Vegas that was so black is so white because the charter school came in and moved you out. The charter school is the face of gentrification. And you got all these black politicians running around Las Vegas. I want to represent you. Vote for me. I ain't voting for none of them unless they can ask you some questions. Question number one. What are you going to do to stop gentrification in Las Vegas? No answer, no vote. Number two, 
What are you going to do to economically empower black folks so we can compete for the dollar in this city the way the Mexicans and the Asians and the white man are doing? Because all of them got access to loans and banks and lines of credit, and black folks can't compete because we don't get those lines of credit. What are you going to do to economically invest in black folks? No answer? No vote? What are you going to do about police genocide and police brutality and law of hate? And I don't want to hear about no damn community review board with no damn power. Every city you go to, they got a community review board with no damn power. How about we make it a hate crime? Automatically, white cop kill an unarmed black person. It's a hate crime, federal hate crime right off the bat. I don't want to hear nothing else, hate crime. Number two, we want the police to look like the community they police. Now don't get me wrong. We got some coonish police. Yes, we do. I know some black cops worse than the white. But guess what? I would rather a black police officer pull me over than a white. Because black police don't have a history of killing black folks. They are following me. Even the coons don't have a history of killing black folks the way white folks do. Why don't the police look like us? And do you know that most of the police in the black community come from outside of that community and don't have no experience in that community? You want them to kill us. Why would you hire an ex-military cutout who lived in an outback white suburb with nothing but KKK and bring him to the middle of the ghetto of Las Vegas to be a cop? You want him to kill black folks. And I don't hear no black politicians talking about a redistribution of officer personnel so they look like the people they police. Why don't we see that? You know what else we need to see? When police get charged, they don't get their defense paid for by the taxpayer. They don't get their defense paid for by the police union. It's going to come out your damn pension. You're going to pay for your defense, not the people. How you going to kill a black person and then have black people pay for the white cops retirement? No! You lose your pension when you kill a black person. But ain't nobody talking about that. In the Congressional Black Caucus, what good are they? I'm trying to find out what they doing up there in Capitol Hill. You right down the street from the president, but you can't go have a conversation. You made black people vote this white man in, he ain't did nothing for us, and you won't even walk up the street for a conversation. Least thing you can do is call Kamala Harris down for a meeting and find out why the hell she's telling people America not racist. Y'all won't even hold her accountable. What good are you? NAACP and Urban League. What good are you? The only thing you do is make black people vote for white people every four years. If you ain't got no, what's, what's your plan to make the public schools better? What is your plan to hire more black men and women in Las Vegas public schools? Not as classroom assistants, not as lunchtime aides, but as principals, assistant principals, deans, and classroom instructors. They don't tell me they don't have the certification because a lot of these white folks don't have the certification. These white folks belong to Teach for America and all these other programs that will give them a job in the black ghetto without no credential. So don't tell me you can't do it for black folks because you do it for white folks all the time. As I prepare to wrap up and take some questions. Six years ago, we started raising money for a school And I want to say thank you to Nevada because we get a lot of donation checks from Las Vegas and Reno. I want to thank y'all. Because y'all all all out here in the desert and shit with no water. And for you to have enough love to send me a check to the other side of the country when you got a drink out of a cactus, I love you. (laughs) But I also want to say this. I want y'all to be there when we have the grand opening because that's your school too. That school belongs to everybody who donated to it. Everybody who donated to it owns the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. And I'm hoping, brothers and sisters, that we'll get the Marcus Garvey Elementary School completely renovated by the end of the summer. That's the goal. We close. We close. I finally found the HVACer and the plumber that I need. I think we're going to make it. Yes, I think we're going to make it. I think you're going to make it. And you know the haters, they praying to the devil that I don't open that damn school. 
they on their knees to white Mary, Jesus, and Joseph. Don't let me my two days. Those niggas are stink. Could you imagine? They wait for that Instagram live for me to say to school. It's going to be LD. It's coming, brothers and sisters. And don't listen to the haters now. We got a beautiful campus. Yes, yes. The schools are modern. They're in shape. They were just vandalized. The electric and the plumbing and the HVAC, but the school is good. Yes. So we want to get the Garvey building done and the Nat Turner gym done. And then once we get the Garvey side done, then we got to get the big school done. And that's the Frederick Douglass High School. And once we get the whole campus done, it will be the largest independent black school campus in America right now. No other independent school has the facilities that we got. Come on in, family, no problem. Yeah, we got a $300,000 tax bill that the white folks threw on us, hoping we can't pay it. But that's all right. I got to talk to them next week, and we're going to do a payment plan. We come too far to quit now. It's only hard because the universe want to make sure we really want this. See, black people need a victory. And the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy, it ain't everything, but it's something. And I need you to be able to walk into a space that you own, that you built, with no white help and no white handout, and say, we did this ourselves. We got to get back to depending on ourselves. It's going to be a school in the daytime, but it's going to be Black Wall Street at the night time. We're going to have, once a month, a black vendor market. We're going to open up the gymnasiums. And every black person with a business on a rotating, the first weekend it'll be y'all, and the next weekend it'll be somebody else. And this will be a one-stop shop. So if you black and you want to buy nothing but black, you can come to one place and get everything black from one place. And then I want to have for all my alpha males in here, because I know we got this manosphere shit going on, this anti-black woman movement. But for black men who don't have a problem showing love and honor to our black women, I want to have a program where we honor and patronize the queen once a season. And so black women, you'll come to the school, and black men will give you a pedicure and black men to give you a manicure. And then we're going to feed you all food cooked by black men. And then we're going to sing and play instruments. Everything will be nice and clean. Now, what you do after the event? <laughs> That's not on FDMG. OK? But we want to show that black people can be African again. And then I want to have an international conference for the black man where black men come together. No women around, just us to talk about us. And then a black woman's conference. And then I want to have the black farmers conference and a black media conference and a black investment conference and a black art conference. And then a black cool conference. And if you got the snow bunny prices, we're going to have a <laughs> snow bunny conference and hear a lot of Negroes who can't find a black woman. But I want it to be a place where you can always come and know it's going to be something positive going on for the family. So we got a lot of, we got some more work to do, but I'm feeling better now than I've felt in the two years since we bought the school. But here's what I want everybody to know. I believe we're going to cross the finish line this summer, but even if we don't, I like where we at. <clears throat> Everybody got criticism, but what are you building? Yes. All I see people building is more YouTube pages and more Instagram pages and more TikTok pages and Clubhouse. And I'm trying to find out how black folks got all these problems and you got so much time on your hands to spend on social media. We ain't got no schools, no banks, no distribution, no shipping, no factories, no hospitals. But you spend five hours on YouTube a day. Three hours on TikTok. 
I got Negroes stalking me to get on Clubhouse. Dr. Johnson, if they could just hear your voice in our room. I'm not getting your damn room. It's cool in that room. And then when I go sign up for Clubhouse, it's like 50 Umar Johnsons already been signed the hell up. People using my name. That's why I got to make sure y'all on my page. I got fake Instagram. Fake, I even got a fake Cash App. So for those of y'all who buy the book today using Cash App, you got to make sure you do dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. Because if you do dollar sign Dr. Umar, that's the fake one. And it got the same picture. Yes. Dollar sign Dr. Umar is not me. They got fake FDMG. This is what Negroes do when they ain't got no life. That's why we got to have re-Africanization classes at the school. So we can get our African mind back. Brothers and sisters, make sure your children read at least one hour a night. Every black child should read at least an hour every single night without fail. Why do we want our kids to read, parents? Four reasons you must read. You too, not just the child. Number one, new vocabulary. They'll do better in school. Number two, it improves their ability to write. They're going to need it in school. Number three, it improves their ability to conversate. They're going to need it in school. Number four, it improves their general knowledge of facts and information. Your child doesn't do better at the white private school because it's necessarily a better school. They do better at the white private school because they are exposed to a higher level of working vocabulary. The weapon that they use to confuse our kids on the Nevada State Academic Assessment is the words. They give our kids confusing words in the questions, and it is the words that they use that are leading our babies to get the answers wrong. Trust me. I'm a school psychologist, I get tests for a living. Sometimes I'm looking at the test like, you could have asked that a lot simpler. You could have asked that a lot simpler. They are intentionally confusing the question because they know black kids don't read. Do you know the average black child has a working vocabulary level that's three levels below their class? 12th graders read on the ninth grade and ninth graders read on the sixth and talk on the sixth. And the best time to help a child build vocabulary is when? Two to five. That's when the vocab will explode by thousands of words. But what do most black children do between the age of two and five? They watch TV. So the best time to help them build a vocabulary, they waste it away. Brothers and sisters, if you want to work at Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey, send me your resume. FDMG resumes at gmail.com. If you buy a book today, you want to get a bookmark. The email address is on the bookmark. Send me your resume. Ladies, you don't have to be natural right now. It's okay. It's okay. The school, if we get the school open this summer, we're going to open school next summer. Open the building this summer start the school for the kids next summer. So you got over 12 months to let your new growth come back. Because I know you got bald spots under there. And ladies, you're talking to a barber. I was trained to cut hair. Sometimes it's best to go bald and start fresh. Stop trying to baby that little bald spot with the two hairs around. Cut that shit off. I'm tired of seeing it. No, I'm serious. Sometimes it's the best to go bald and start fresh. If you notice, a lot of sisters who go bald, they get a full head of hair. You keep trying to save that damaged root. Keep watering that little cactus. Cut that shit off. And black men, you got to help your woman have confidence in her beauty, because beauty comes from within, not from without. Make her go bald and massage her bald head every day. Kiss it with some kiwi butter, some shea butter, some strawberry lemon almond butter. Let it sit out in the sun. And before you know it, the hair come back. And black woman, don't trivialize how beautiful you look when you cut your hair down. I have never seen a black woman who went with short hair where it did not intensify the beauty. And the reason it intensifies the beauty is because it accentuates your facial features. Does everybody remember Sanaa Lathan? 
when she cut her hair down. She was already my Hollywood crush, minus the perm, right? But when she cut her hair down, she went 50 times more beautiful. You really saw the beauty in the face, and far too often black women, y'all cover y'all beauty up with that hair. The skinniest little girl with 200 pounds of weave on Looked like a mop. What the hell is that? So that's why for FDMG, you got to be nasty. And after we open up the boys' school, we got to open up the girls' school. And they got to be natural too. The girls got to be natural too. And if you forget to make your girl natural, don't worry, I'm a barber. I keep a fresh set of walls on me. And I'm a ball her. But I'm going to make her love it ball. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All my girl students is going to love who they are when they come out of FDMG if nothing else. They're going to need the white man perm, his weed, his extension. <coughs> we are spending $30 billion a year on hair and beauty. Do you know what we can do with an extra $30 billion a year in black America? In black man, I blame you as much as the queen because the reason she wants to look like a European is because what we want to be with is a European. The black woman would not be frying her hair up like that and wearing them weaves if we didn't think it was sexy. Let's be honest. A lot of black men ain't comfortable enough with a woman looking purely natural. That's why she's synthetic. If black men said we ain't dating a sister who's not natural, they'll all be natural in 48 hours. <laughs> it ain't a woman in here who don't want some milk with her cookies once in a while. We got some young people over there. I want to give y'all five minutes. High school or college? Somebody yell out, high school or college? I got some couple things for my high school people. Number one, make sure you come out of high school with a QPA of 3.0 or higher so you can qualify for the scholarships. Do not go to college unless you know you're going to finish. The worst thing you can do is go to the University of Nevada or University of Las Vegas or Cali or Washington and go for two years and then drop out. Now you owe forty to $60,000 a year and you don't even have a credential to help pay it off with. When you go to college, Make sure you major in something that is financially relevant in the black community. Do not go to school. Do not go to college and choose a major that you can't earn with it. A degree in art history. What do you want to do with a degree in art history? What do you want to do with a degree in grasshopper reproduction? Make sure the degree matters. And I'm going to tell you something else. Don't let the college try to trick you into choosing a different major. I'm going to tell you what they're going to do. Let's say you want to be pre-law or engineering. They're going to make you take a placement test. And they're going to come to you and they're going to say you didn't score high enough on your placement test. And because you didn't score high enough on your placement test, you can't be engineering. You can't be pre-law. And then they might say, maybe you want to be a social worker. Maybe you want to be a gym teacher. Now, there's nothing wrong with either of those, but that's not what you wanted. I would rather you drop out and tell them to resend your loans or your scholarship money and find another school. Don't you dare let somebody put you into financial debt for a degree you don't even want. And I'm going to tell you also this. If you're going to go to college, get out in four years. Don't be no professional student. Don't be taking five and seven and nine and 12. You be a damn grandfather before you get your bachelor's. You go to college to finish, not to sit. And I'm going to tell you this. If you're not sure as to whether you want to go to college, go to trade school. Listen to me. I love what I do as a psychologist. But if I could do it over, I would have went to trade school first. I was in a barbering program in high school. The white folks made me drop out because they said, you're going to college, you need to get calculus and physics. I didn't even need it. They didn't know what the hell they were talking about. I should have stayed and had my barbering license, and I probably had barbering programs all over for the kids on top of it. So my point is, if you go to trade school, ladies and gentlemen, two years is all it takes. Become a licensed plumber, 
Lysis Electrician, Lysis HVAC, Lysis Roofer, Lysis Welder, Lysis Auto Mechanic. Two years, and you now have a skill that can pay the bills. And then you can still go to college. You can still go to college after your two-year trade certificate, but now if you don't finish college, you have a license. And you can now go and work for yourself. Do you know what it costs us to get the electric fixed in our Garvey building? Just the Garvey building, not the Douglas. Ten classrooms, quarter of a million dollars. The HVAC, the lowest quote I got was $250,000. The plumbing, $100,000. Guess how long it's going to take them to do the electric for $250,000? Three weeks. Guess how long it's going to take them to do the HVAC? Two weeks. Guess how long it's going to take them to do a plumbing? $100,000 for the plumber, and he'll be done in two weeks. That's more money than the surgeon. That's more money than the engineer. We have to stop telling our kids they got to go to college, make them go to trade school first. If I could do it all over again, I would have got my barbering license. Consider trade school first. And to my ladies, whether you go to college or trade school, you're not going to fall in love. You're going to get your education. I have seen so many young sisters thirsty for that love, go to college to fall in love, get pregnant, and have to forfeit a four-year scholarship. Please stay focused on the books. The boys will be there when you're done. Trust me. The last thing I want to say, don't go to no college or trade school that you have not physically visited. Don't you dare choose a school off the brochure. You have to go. Tell your mothers and fathers, listen, mommy and daddy, I know you don't want to fly me to uh, Spelman or Morehouse. I know you don't want to fly me to Harvard or Princeton. I know you don't want to fly me to Norfolk State or Howard. I know you don't want to fly me to South Carolina State. I understand that. But if I don't get to see what this school is really like in person, and you pay $30,000, for my first year of college, and I get there and don't like it. You just lost $30,000 that you got to pay back. Flying to Atlanta might be a $500 ticket, but it's a whole lot cheaper than $30,000. Make sure you visit the school. Now, when you apply to college, they're going to want five things, college or trade school. Dr. Umar wants you to apply to at least 16 colleges. Four, eight, 12, 16, and I'm going to break them down. Four schools you're going to apply to are local, right here in Nevada. I don't want you to go to school in Nevada. I want you to get away from all the distractions in your life. Parents, siblings, boyfriends and girlfriends, I want you at least two hours away so you can focus. But the reason I want you to apply to four schools in Nevada is if you don't get accepted outside of Nevada, you can still get started on time. Four local schools. Then I want you to apply to four of your dream schools. These are the big schools that you always wanted to go to because you might get lucky and get a scholarship. And then I want you to apply to eight 